Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, this is Inside the Documentary, featuring breakdowns and interviews about all the latest documentaries. Isn't that pretty? That's lovely. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Documentary here at the Popcorn Talk Network. I'm your host, Ryan Malachi, and today we are going to be talking the Barkley Marathons, the race that eats its young. Now, it really does. This is a brutal 100-mile-plus race in the backwoods, Tennessee, and the documentary is great. We actually have with us today the filmmaker and director, one of them, one of the two, yeah. Annika Iltis. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Can't wait to get started talking about this crazy race, <laughs> this crazy film. For those of you who are not familiar yet with the Barkley Marathons, please enjoy this trailer. First rule of Barkley is don't talk about it. If you talk about it, then we don't, you're not going to be part of it. Somebody may have said something, oh, you, you think that's hard, you should look at this race they have down in Tennessee. Barclays at their own edge of possibility, impossibility. If you're going to face a real challenge, it has to be a real challenge. You can't accomplish anything without the possibility of failure. It was big news, he was famous bad guy that he got out of this inescapable prison. Most people would, would be better off with more pain in their lives. The primary villain is the course. And for some people, just to get back to camp alive is all they want in the world. Wow. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Jeez. All right. I, I love it. Hey, can I ask real quick, does that soundtrack, where that come from? Is that original That's soundtrack? amazing, right? That's, yeah. yeah, that is original. Um, that was done by Tyler Gibbons and Robin MacArthur. They uh, are in a band called Red Heart the Ticker which is the two of them. They're okay. um, husband and wife in the woods of Vermont. And um, How appropriate. Tyler is, Robin's also a writer, and Ty is uh, a composer. And they are actually friends of mine, and it was sort of fortuitous um, to get that music because that's actually from an album of theirs. And I was trying to think of something um, for the trailer when we were initially cutting a trailer. Um, before we had scored the film or anything and I heard that song I started thinking about them and I was like oh wait their their music is very sort of um has that feel that sort of rough yeah. feel to it and uh I heard that song and I started cutting the trailer to it and then they actually came out to LA and and I said you know can I use your trailer your yeah, song for the trailer because I already did can I use right it? <laughs> and they were like yeah and then Ty was like she said actually you know I compose music for documentaries now and so that's how that began and he wow. his music is amazing um and so we were really lucky to to get to work with him and we did all of that he was in vermont we were here in la that's great yeah oh, it was a perfect fit i really enjoyed it oh, I'm, what was it called the robin red heart the ticker red heart the ticker is the name of their band and red heart tyler the I remember that yeah tyler gibbons it was the composer of the film Perfect. Okay, well, that's great. Beautiful music, beautiful documentary. First, let's get some of these f grueling facts about this race out of the way. Yeah. Um, it's, okay, and so this race has been going since 1986. Yep. And in the past 25 years, only 10 racers have even finished the race. Yeah. Yeah, when we, well, when <laughs> 25 we... 25 years, yeah. 10 finishers. 
That's when we started the film, okay. I have to say. So and there, when, there have been more since then. Um, perhaps. Perhaps, maybe. We'll have to watch and find out, Yeah, right? I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, when we had started the film, it had been going on for 25 years and only 10 people had finished it. And yeah. just to hear that fact alone was right. sort of interesting. We're like, what is this thing that, that no one finishes? Yeah, can I ask you, what mm -hmm. what initially inspired you to... to? I mean, did you hear about this race beforehand? Or, or when you heard about it, were you like... We got to try, we got to race, or we got to film other people race. Yeah. <laughs> like, what inspired you to do this film? Yeah, so um, it was all sort of very fortuitous because neither Tim, the co director of the film, Tim, um, who's not here right now, but um, Timothy Kane, Timothy we, Kane. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard at work today. Mm -hmm. um, he found an article in the Believer magazine written by Leslie Jameson, and it was called uh, the, the Immortal Hor Horizon. The Immortal Horizon. Yes. Ooh. And um, the Believer magazine, for those that don't know, is a, a kind of a literary magazine. People, writers write stories, fiction, nonfiction, interviews. It's a bit of everything. And this uh, article that he read, he read part of it and then put the magazine down. We had to go somewhere. And then uh, my roommate at the time, it was his magazine, and he had taken it to read. And so Tim, for months, was like thinking about this article that he hadn't finished, and it kept in his brain. And he finally got it and and read the end of it and showed it to me. I was like, "You have to read this. This is it's so insane. It's it it reads like fiction. Like it doesn't seem real." And so I read it, and we had just finished. Um, we're both camera assistants in the film TV industry. And we had just finished a long job. We're very exhausted and we're ready to make something ourselves. We kind of had needed a creative mm -hmm. outlet. And, and the article was like about this race? The article was about the Barclay and it was written in a way that just read like fiction, but it was nonfiction. It was, you read this article and it's, it's online. You can get it through our website. Um, the Immortal Horizon, you yeah. found it on the Believer magazine. Yes. And it's an, isn't it amazing how far the ripples flow? You pick yeah. up a magazine one day and the next day you're making a documentary. Well, actually, how long did it take you? It was pretty fast. It was, was it almost really? the next day. <laughs> yeah. We, um, you just, just you know, let's go run the, you know, all yeah. right. So real quick, this guy, Lazarus Kane. Lazarus Lake. Or Lazarus, I'm sorry, Timothy Kane. <laughs> Tim would Lazarus, love that. La <laughs> uh, Lazarus, pardon me, Lazarus Lake mm -hmm. started this um, this race kind of because he's this this intense runner mm -hmm. and he seems, seems kind of like a quirky, fun guy to be around. But he starts this grueling punishment of a race and uh, it's it's kind of a secret, right? Yeah. How did you, may I ask, like, how did you get in there how did you find out who to talk to how did you get in to start filming yeah so it seems like kind of like a cult uh race like you don't even know how to apply how to get in yeah it's all a, kind of a mystery it is and that was what was so compelling about it mm -hmm. because we had never heard of it and it had been going on for 25 years yeah. and nowadays you kind of oh yeah i've heard of that thing and when yeah. you hear about this and you anyone who starts to hear about the barclay once they hear a little bit about it then they start googling it and they're like they want to know more right. so that was kind of what happened to us so when we read the article we were like kind of tracked down laz through various methods it wasn't that <laughs> you easy sent him a, a carrier pigeon we <laughs> did we sent him a carrier pigeon uh -huh. um and he was open to it. I mean, he was um, the first thing he said, basically, when we called him, he said, you know, we're interested in, in doing a documentary about the Barkley and can we come to the race this year, which was very soon after we got in contact with him. And he was like, well, it's a public park. You know, I'm not going to stop you from coming here. And we're like, oh, lad. OK, <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, that's kind of how he is, though. He's very, you know, he keeps you on your toes. He's a really smart guy. He's mm -hmm. a fascinating character. Um, but yeah, once once we went down there a month ahead of time and scouted the course with him and he met us and and once he kind of knew what our goal was, which was basically to keep the mystery of the Barkley intact, mm -hmm. but show what it is and why people go there from all over the world mm -hmm. um, every year, that he was he was on board and, and we kind of slowly gained the trust of, of the runners and people and um, have been working on it ever since. That was almost four years ago. Well, almost four years ago. Yeah. Wow, well, yeah, you know, I gotta say, when you went out there to keep the mystery alive and to portray exactly what you just said. You did a great job. 
Thanks. Because when I'm watching it, and I, I don't know if you know this, I'm wearing my flannel. I'm a Colorado yes. boy myself. That's I've great. done a few of those races, uh, the Warrior Dash. Mm -hmm. It's only a 5K. Uh -huh. You know, it's, you got like some obstacles here and there, and I always feel really, you know, I get done with it. I'm like, all right, time for a beer and a turkey <laughs> leg. You know, I feel like kind of accomplished, like a, a mountain man. I yeah. did it. You know, but uh, I'm watching this, and I'm like, I. I don't, I'm not, I don't deserve the flannel. <laughs> I'm not worthy of the flannel. I mean, this is, this is intense. There's, there's five loops of, uh, it's basically a marathon per loop. Yeah. That's it's basically. Through, and, and it's a marathon, but through, what is it? 60,000 feet of gain and lost elevation, which is equivalent mm -hmm. to a nice little graphic in the, in the documentary. It said climbing and descending Mount Everest twice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these yeah. racers are running five marathons up and down Mount Everest two times. Yeah. With just what they can carry on their back and maybe just a little bit of a chuckle from the dark character, Lazarus in the corner. Yeah. I mean, just to sort of briefly give uh, an idea of what the Barkley is, it's this um, ultra marathon race that takes place in Tennessee. It's um, when we started, it had been going on for 25 years. And. It's basically Laz created Lazarus Lake, who's the co-founder of the race. He co-founded it with his friend Raw Dog, mm -hmm. and um, it's basically he wanted to create something that was at the absolute limit of human capability. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea: was that it was would be almost impossible to finish. Um, so it's about 130 miles. Laz says it's 100 miles, but the people who have maybe um, done some measurements say it's yeah. it's 130 miles. So it's you know, 26 miles per loop. It's a looped course. It's, um, as you said, at the end of it, if you finish the end, which obviously most people don't, um, it's it's 120,000 feet of elevation change. The oh, course geez. isn't marked. There's, there's no marks. You can't use GPS. You can't use anything technology-wise. Map. map, compass, your navigational skills, and you go out in the woods. And there are, I guess they're not marks, but there are markers that they use books. Yes, yeah, so... so well, a couple of years into the race, they were like, well, how can we tell if people actually, because the course changes every year, pretty yeah. much. Sometimes it doesn't, but most years it does. And, and they don't tell, they don't tell the racers what the course is until um, the, basically the day before the race. Somewhere in Tennessee. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to figure <laughs> out where to go. And then um, you also have to figure out how to apply. Like all these things are, are secrets. And, and they're basically, they keep them close to the vest because they want to make sure that people who are going to do this are actually have, have some, they're not going to injure themselves. They're not right. going to, that they, that. Like a the, rite, rite of passage. Rite like of you, passage. You got to really want it. Exactly. Yeah. And um, he puts all these stumbling box, blocks up so that people who are, who actually get to the starting line, to the yellow gate, which is the starting line, um, have are okay to be there because right. you don't want people who are just like yeah i want to try this thing and you know yeah i was watching <laughs> and i was like what happens if they get lost and they all away? do and they all do they but, all they all, do. but they all no one's been seriously injured or, or lost forever right everyone comes back not yet not yet yeah <laughs> I mean, i'm like yeah i'm watching this thing it seems like they're just going into the woods you know sometimes they start the race because he, he doesn't tell him, right? He, he gives him a 12-hour window. The race might start yeah. at noon. It might start at 1 a.m., 5 a.m. You don't know. You just you don't know. at the sound of a conch shell. Yes. That's when the race. You have like an you hour have an to get hour. ready. Yeah. And that's that's brutal. But I'm thinking these people, you know, go off into the middle of the woods at 4 a.m. with a headlamp and a bag of water and a, ma a map and a compass. That's it. Yeah. And they're expecting to just go for maybe 20, 20 plus miles. Mm -hmm. around to try to try to make it back yeah are these you know marines actually there was one character yeah in the show he seemed like he was you know, he had the army pants and he, he seemed like he yeah. was a really formidable kind of guy he's an amazing and and a lot of there have been a lot of military um veterans and um the year we were there um tim hardy who um was the the man you're speaking of he's he he's got... run for years nonstop. like they he has run every day for many years he's like a i can't remember how many year veteran of the military he's yeah. he's in you know amazing shape he's done amazing races um but because he wasn't specifically prepared for the barclay that year um which is mainly an elevation 
thing if you don't okay. if you're not training on elevation you generally probably don't do very well um, but because of that and Laz knew that he got the honor of being the um, sacrificial um, yeah, person yeah. that year which you can if you see the film you can they're kind of picking on him a little bit you yeah know? I mean they pick on everyone that's sure. that's the thing is like it's it's this it sort of rides that line of something that is probably the most important thing that someone will ever do for themselves but also it's a complete mockery of these types of races because yeah. there are a lot of so it's an ultra marathon and that's definition wise is anything over a marathon so anything above 26.2 miles but they're generally between like 50 miles or 100 miles um that's where they lie and and people run those really quickly like they other ultras have maybe like a street or a sidewalk they run even on, right? they do or even on trails um they have you know people run those in 16 hours, 7 to 15 hours. Like, I, I don't know what the fastest ultra is, but people run them really quickly. The Barkley has a 60 hour time limit. So, so you have that less gives you than an idea. three days yeah. <laughs> to, run, to, to run up and down Mount Everest two times. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> it, it's incredible. I got to ask when you're mm -hmm. filming this, I mean, you got a lot of footage of all the racers on different segments of the course. Yeah. Did you actually run the Barkley? No. With your camera gear? No. <laughs> like... We, um, no, we knew that, um, it's funny because neither Tim or I are, um, were either sports minded people or runners by any sense of the imagination. Um, but we knew when we started to shoot it that we were going to have to figure out a way to get some of the footage of the runners. Um, and that couldn't be something where, um, you know, where we'd have to hike five hours into the course. So a month ahead of the main race that year that we were shooting, we scouted the course with Laz and um, went on a couple hikes with him, which was very entertaining. That must have been an experience. It was great. And um, he showed us certain places where we could put cameras or camera operators or if he wanted an unmanned camera. And really the idea was to do everything with his blessing so that, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't affecting the race. We weren't affecting the runner's navigation. Mm -hmm. If we had a person with a camera, they already navigation wise, it was a they knew where they were already. So they weren't, you know, we weren't giving anything away by yeah. having someone out hey, there. There's a camera guy. Wait. Yeah, they're like, oh, that must be the way. So um, and we tried to have during while runners were out there, we tried to have um, l less interaction so that they were still in this, in you know, zone. in the zone. Mm -hmm. And because that's I mean, that's the whole idea of the race, right, is that you don't sign up for something that's basically impossible um, to just, hey, this sounds like fun. Like you're, right. you're doing it for a reason. And that's usually a pretty personal reason. Mm -hmm. And um, as you, you'll see in the film, um, there are everyone has different reasons some yeah. people want to talk about them some people don't and some people don't maybe it's not something specific but it's just this idea of facing a true challenge that some people really want and it's just the fact of doing that with without having to have a reason i guess yeah what do you think it is about uh human nature that makes anyone look at something so impossible as this and say you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna go try what is it about I don't know. I feel like uh, it, outside of just this race, yeah, the um, the possibility of failure is alluring. Now, what do you think that is about people? Why do we like? Why do we like the idea of of failing? Yeah, um, I think. I mean, from this <laughs> making this film, I think that you learn so much about yourself um, when you fail at something, and you learn how to handle failure and how, you know, if something doesn't work, like what you could have done better next time. Or I think we learn probably a lot more from our failures than we maybe do from our successes. But right. the interesting Absolutely. thing about this race is that you're kind of going in knowing that you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. But as you see in the film, like the we wanted to focus on people's sort of personal definition yeah. of success and failure. And that's a very specific thing that you come out of this seeing because some people go very far and they feel like it's a failure because mm -hmm. they didn't finish the five loops. And some people finish, they call three loops a fun run. You know? <laughs> fun. I found that right. kind of music. <laughs> three <laughs> fun marathons, run. fun run. Um, some people finish that. Some people finish one loop and they, they treat it as the biggest achievement of their life. Yeah. Um, and so that's really, as Laz says in the film, 
you know, by the time the ordeal is over, people have their own versions of success and failure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, especially the, the type of person who does this race, which a lot of them, most of them are scientists, mm -hmm. physicists, um, glaciologists. They all have done a lot in their lives. They have PhDs and all this, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of study. And they come to this race with like trying to see another challenge through right. and what do they need to do to to do that you know they have spreadsheets of their training logs and right. they have like well calorie how much intake calorie intake and, salt intake yeah. like all of these like calculations and so a lot of it is that but then in the end you know they're out there on their own and you really get oh, there's very little time nowadays that we actually get to be outside like escape, in a forest escape all of this yes this, exactly. the lights and the camera <laughs> the, the screens and, and everything just, and the, and the yeah. tweeters and the instas yeah because yeah. they don't you know they can't take their phones they can't take you don't you know so it's very much a, a an escape an escape yeah from whatever it is personally that they'd like to escape yeah to or from when I was watching, I, I i mean, there was characters that made me laugh. There was really, there was there were some that would jerk on my heartstrings. Yeah. I mean, I had a little bit of everything. You you got to deal with, I mean, did you expect to, to run into that variety, that richness of different kind of characters? Yeah. No, I mean, we, so the ramp up to shooting this film was so quickly. Like, it was probably seven weeks around then. Um, and we really just, like, we found out about it. We found Laz. We jumped in. And we, knowing that statistic of in 25 years, only 10 people have finished, mm -hmm. you, we pretty much went in thinking, well, no one's going to finish. And yeah. how can we tell the story of the Barkley with no one finishing? What's going to, what, what's the narrative going to be mm -hmm. in that? Because very much when we wanted, when we started the film, we didn't want to make like a technical, like a, a running movie. I'm doing air quotes, but <laughs> there are, there's a genre of film that are, are running films and they're, people love them and, and that's great. But we wanted to make something that was still a documentary, a narrative story that people like ourselves could watch and, and get something um, from yeah. so yeah so so it was we were very lucky the year that we went because amazing amazing things happened and we never could have expected <laughs> what what we saw I mean I still get goosebumps yeah seeing the end of the film no it's brilliant it's very well made I the, the Lazarus character I and mean, he's He's quite a character. It's kind of like a, a little bit focused around him because it's kind of his his baby. But um, yeah, then the rest of the characters, even though they have their story, I feel like they're kind of a representative of people in general. Like their yeah. story, everyone can kind of relate to. And Lazarus is this, you know, kind of a unique, one of a kind yeah. kind of guy, <laughs> you know, and, and he shared this with everybody. And then you kind of, yeah, you relate to these others. Um, I, I'm, I'm yeah. getting thirsty just talking about this. <laughs> There's definitely like an every man, you know, these are not professional athletes. I should say that these aren't, yeah, they they're not like, getting yeah. paid to do this. And I have to say that most, a lot of professional athletes don't want to do this race because that means that they're going to probably fail and that goes on their record sure. and they don't want that on their record. Right. So they're not going to even try it. But there is like, we wanted to make the Barclay itself as the main character of the story and Laz is off obviously yeah. a huge part the, of that as i said in the trailer it was uh the, the bad guy the antagonist in this yeah. film is the race itself yes it kind of seemed like lazarus is a little bit because he's kind of enjoys the yeah. uh <laughs> you know, everyone struggles but yeah. you can tell he's a he's a really good guy he comes from a good place too. he does i mean initially when we went to meet him i was so intimidated because you read about him and he says things like well no woman will ever finish the barclay and I read that and I was like, Ooh, oh, this is not no going to go did. well. <laughs> and then I went down there and and when we first met him, I mean, you as you get to know him and and talk to him, you realize what he's doing. And a lot of what he does is basically to try and push people to try and challenge people. And him saying that is really him waiting for because no woman has ever finished the Barkley. Yeah, so he's, he's like kind of poking, no, poking the bear. Poking, exactly. You know? Yeah, That's this bear isn't going to wake up. Yep. This bear isn't going to wake up. Oh, there yep. he goes. I woke the bear. So okay. we're, we're waiting for that to happen. There's a, I'm sure there's a few things that are going to happen. I mean, it's, this documentary, I never heard of the Barkley before, yeah. but now a lot of people are going to. Right. Do you foresee the race becoming a bigger thing? I think, so that was a big concern 
of ours um, when we started the film. And so everything we've kind of done along the way, because they keep it secret and it's mm -hmm. this special thing, it becomes this little world for these 60 hours every year. Um, and and it's really, it's treated with, you know... Like a little baby bird. Yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> people... It's, it's a family that comes there a lot of times every year. So um, we wanted to treat it with the utmost respect mm -hmm. and do everything in line with, with Laz's blessing. So anytime we kind of had a decision to make, you know, whether it was with um, distribution or, or all these post things that, you know, we learned along the way, we would call him and say, well, what, you know, here's what it, this could be. And what if, you know, what if people see it around the world? Like, what is that going to do? What's going to happen? And he is always has the answer that you never think he's going to have. Like he's always, he's really smart and he thinks things through. And he was basically like, first of all, um, if more people know about the race, it's, it's protected. Um, because in years past, um, it actually got shut down one year and, um, they've changed a couple things to make it more environmentally friendly. So they mm. keep a limit on how many runners are allowed to run okay. so that it, the environmental impact is, is less. And, um, so things like that. So it's going to protect the race and it's going to be able to keep happening. But also, um, his response is basically that, that nothing ever, nothing stays the same. Change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. And so he sees the Barkley, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but, you know, this is this is a big challenge, and and I think he loves the film, and I think it's it has inspired people already, and I think for Laz, that's important. Right. And that's like and that's it, what the race is for. It kind of solidifies the Barkley. It kind of puts its uh, puts its flag on a hill somewhere, somewhere yeah. in, the in the Tennessee. Yeah, mountains. and uh, so and more people might be finding out, be taught word of mouth. They might be applying, but. There's still only a certain amount of people who are allowed to race. Exactly, it's, and you also you have to figure out how to apply. I mean, that's the thing <laughs> we don't even... <laughs> we don't give away any of the secrets, yeah. so more people might know about it. You still have to figure out how to apply. And I have to say, most people who see this film, this is always the answer, are not going to want to go do it. Yeah, right. I mean, it's not really a. It didn't make me want to get up and and go no. on a run. It made it, me want <laughs> made me wrap up my blanket a little tighter. Like, oh my god, that yeah. looks brutal. There's a small percentage of people I think who will see it and say, I'm going to put that on my bucket list but mm -hmm. but that's not the majority there might even be dare i say some more i don't know i guess you'd call them copycat races because yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. another really alluring fact of this race the barkley marathons yeah. thank you <laughs> um there it's based you kind of got the idea Laz got the idea from this prison escape that mm -hmm. happened in the area from james earl ray yes. the man who shot martin luther, martin luther king yeah and he got out of this jail, which you, you're running through, through the race. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a little bit of a crazy twist in, in the race that you'll have to watch and find out and see for yourself. It's really got my like, heart beating. I'm like, oh, my God, through a prison? Yeah. Oh, an active prison? Yeah. Uh, this guy escapes from this prison. He only gets a few miles or whatever. But um, <laughs> I said, I can run 100 miles in that woods. And that's how it started. Yeah. You think there, I mean... There's been other prison escapes around the country. I mean, that might, I don't know. I think it'd be... Uh, that's an interesting Let's run the Shawshank marathons. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's... I mean, I think it's... Um, we kind of left that part of the film because it's a really interesting origin story. The prison is in this sort of valley between these very steep mm -hmm. mountains. Kind of a little nook of the film. Yeah. It wasn't the focus, but yeah, it's a little... It's a little piece and, and the... F and it's it's a fascinating story as to why it started mm -hmm. um and we always like to re like say that it's basically like a mockery of of him yeah. because that's really what it was and so yeah this guy James yeah. Earl Gray's got nothing yeah man. he's got no moxie like, well yeah I mean he's you know it we it was like how do we sort of tell this story without focusing on it because it's it's an interesting origin story but really it's not it's not, it's not yeah. the Barkley. It's 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 why it start. It's you know was an idea of how it started. But mm -hmm. yeah, we kind of keep it sort of 
in the middle of the film so as to not focus too much on on one of the worst people ever known to i know right no you did a great job of that too it was just kind of like a little oh that's interesting yeah we tried Um, and that was part of the difficult problem was trying to parse out all this information because mm -hmm. there's so many sort of facts and and pieces of data that we wanted to put in but still have it be interesting so it's like we couldn't bombard the audience right away with everything and so we kind of like do this little building as you go along the way so that by the end of it you're like that's and you did that's exactly what you did i took it as kind of the uh the journey of the human condition peppered with a little bit of a of a biography a little bit of historical fact and a little bit of you know humor and personal story but for, for the most part i just took it as this is the struggle of what it is to be a person with a goal or someone who lives in the world and wants to escape from it just the human condition and its struggle to Someone once told me, you push your limits far enough, you find out there aren't any. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in this film, people push their limits so far uh, that that's even though they do have a point where they can't run anymore, mm-hmm. they find that they didn't have those limits they thought they had, which means that if they didn't have them today or this year, who says they're going to have the same limit next year? It really does. You push yourself far enough and you find out that there really is no place to stop. There yeah. is no finish yeah and i that is exactly i think the point of this race i mean i think some people read about it and go well that's that's stupid why would anyone do that you know that's just you know sadistic or whatever um but that's exactly the point the point right is to to try and push yourself and and try something new and and go past these boundaries that you think you might have and so hopefully we in the film hopefully we we have show that but also i think um from the response we've gotten so far um it seems to be like fairly inspiring to people um even if they're not you know s- sports people or runners or what have you it's it's kind of an all-encompassing you know what can you do like what are you going to do tomorrow mm-hmm. um and i think for us making this film has definitely been the boundary pushing um aspect for us for sure i mean we've yeah it's been a a very difficult long road yeah (laughs) no no, no pun intended yeah it's we always equate it like making the film has definitely been our own personal Uh, belief can i can i get into uh just like you personally Mm -hmm. as a filmmaker Mm -hmm. was this your first major film that you've made yeah, so Tim and myself were both camera assistants, and um, we've worked for many, many years in that industry. So we kind of generally have worked on bigger films, you know, narrative films. We've both probably done a little bit days here and there on documentaries, but this is both our, our first feature film that we've made. Just from beginning to end, all encompassing. We have done pretty much, I mean, obviously we had composer we mm-hmm. had help mariana blanco our editor we had help with the motion graphics orrin anderson and we had uh, around seven people help us with um, shooting that year's race um, but beyond that like from start to finish every single thing tim and i have done ourselves wow and it's really hard it's not gonna <laughs> lie it's when also this was a side project for us so mm-hmm. we have full-time jobs and which is probably why it has taken four years to get out into the world but um we had to learn everything along the way you know premiere editing photoshop to do posters and you know just everything everything and post-production and um distribution that was a whole new world um so as much as we knew kind of set wise like we knew we know how set runs we know photography we know all of that um And we knew, you know, when we were shooting, we definitely wanted to take care of our crew and treat them well and and be honest with everyone uh, along the way about what we were making, all of the subjects. Um, So everyone, you know, knew knew what we were trying to do. Um, But yeah, the the process of making a film from start to finish with basically two people mainly is... um, yeah it's, daunting it's daunting Daun- <laughs> if we had known going into it that it yeah. was going to take this long and and how much we would go through along the way it would be interesting to see, see if we would jump in but i think that's why it was so good that everything kind of started really quickly mm-hmm. because we it didn't give you it's like just jump right in we just went for it and then once you're in it's like well 
now you're learning. It's a learning curve, right? Oh, yeah. So steep learning curve. Now that you've gone through that curve and you've developed all these, you know, you have your old skills mixed with these new ones, you've, you're a filmmaker. You, you, you made a film, and it's a good one. I, I really liked it. Okay. Is there anything in the future you're looking towards, maybe doing another project? Um, maybe with Tim or on your own or with someone else? Are you yeah. thinking of something else? Yeah, I mean, I think we both have ideas um, about things we'd like to make. I have a narrative idea in mind um, that I've actually had for many years, actually even before my, we started this documentary. Um, and so whether we make something together or separately, um, it's we get that question all the time. Like we've been playing film festivals and um, doing screenings for the last year, trying to get the film, you know, I word know, about us, the us film. Us Americans, well, that's great, what's next? Right, <laughs> and, every, and people ask that. And someone told us very early on, people are gonna ask you this question. And mm -hmm. we're like, that's crazy. You know, right. we are still trying to make this film. And it's funny to think about actually trying to start something else because literally we've had zero free time like all yeah. of our free time has been spent working on this film so um we both have ideas about things but um we just haven't had time <laughs> to do it i mean <laughs> tim yet. is at work today i took the day off work today um because we have a lot Thank of stuff so to much. catch up on and um the film comes out on tuesday so we're like well we have to you know this this mm -hmm. is the, what four years of what we've worked for so yeah you gotta you gotta yeah <laughs> see see the the bird leave the nest so to speak yeah. and well that that's great that you're that you're so committed to something that is you know not the primary focus of your life like you said you still have a job and stuff I think that the fact that you and Timothy as you know being being somewhat new to the filmmaking process like the total filmmaking process, right. to be able to start with just uh, reading an article in a magazine, to being inspired, to going through the journey and to come and to be on this show today saying, check out my film coming out on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, I think that's a big inspiration, just as much so as any of the runners themselves that you see in the film. I'm inspired to run maybe a little half marathon someday. <laughs> that's big. I mean, I started yeah. running once we started after, after the weekend, which if you see the film, you'll see but after seeing that um i started running i was like i don't have any excuse anymore and i don't right. i don't i don't call myself a runner but um i run you know a couple miles or whatever i can do i did a turkey trot over thanksgiving turkey but trot turkey trot <laughs> um, that, were you like waddle then? um that, that's a good idea yeah. no, it was, just, it was turkey, a five turkey day. leg and walk, walk around <laughs> <laughs> i can do trot with turkey it's like the pre the preparation for Thanksgiving meal <laughs> right you gotta burn, burn it off before yeah. you put it on yeah but if I mean I think really if people are looking the the movie is it's funny like mm -hmm. it's not a sports movie it's not a running you know it's a it is it's a human spirit kind of movie and it's weird and it's funny and dark very dark like Laz has mm -hmm. dark humor yeah and um and in the end hopefully inspiring for people so yeah we couldn't have we got very lucky, um, I have to say that, but we also worked really, really hard for four years. Wow. Oh, it shows, and it paid off. <laughs> and if you're sitting at home right now uh, watching this, go on a run. <laughs> you, know, you will, after seeing this film, you will be inspired to go on a jog or to pursue things that you never thought you were able to do because the idea of failure is... An alluring fact that even though you know that you might not reach something the fact that you still reached out and tried to grab it anyways that's what it means to be a successful human being well I, I don't know so. I tried to be deep there for a second <laughs> but it's something like you know shoot for the moon even if you miss you land, you land somewhere amongst the stars oh, something good. like that I like that one yeah, no that honestly you, this this movie uh, this film was an inspiration on multiple levels and you Annika are an inspiration to me and, and I think anyone who can see this uh, will know that you, know, you put your mind to something, you are, if you're a filmmaker or an artist or creative or an athlete or whatever it is, you have an idea in your head, you put in the work and you fight through that learning curve, you can make it happen, you can make it a reality. And uh, that's an inspiring thing. So thank Thanks. you for inspiring us. Thank you. I also have to say it's, it's something that was really outside of our realm, even though we were in you know, we're in this business and work as camera assistants, but we, you know, we help other people make their stuff. And so we really kind of 
it was it was a huge leap and a huge challenge for us so for anyone who's watching or, or listening um you would be amazed at, at what you can actually do <laughs> that's amazing i feel like can we uh <laughs> <laughs> oprah <laughs> i know super soul sunday here yeah, we go yeah no it's no kidding it's really <laughs> honestly a pleasure i want people i want everyone to see this film um let's go ahead and talk about real quick yeah people can see it uh, the best way they can see it is at barkleymovie.com yes it comes right? out december 8th and it's um we've been doing some we had a week-long run in la and in toronto actually and we've been playing festivals but december 8th barkleymovie.com is okay. where you can get all the information it's you can pre-order it on itunes right now hey you you know anyone uh you know that could use a nice inspiring movie for christmas yes anyone maybe is a running fan or an outdoors fan or just someone who loves inspirational stories christmas Get yeah. on the Barkley movie. Yeah. The Barkley marathons. What better way to spend Christmas than with Lazarus Lake? Right. I could Curled not think up of with a, a better. Fire. Oh, I w he would love it. That'd be um, great. But it'll also be out on DVD and Blu ray on December 8th and on all digital platforms in addition to iTunes and then also on cable, uh, on your local cable VOD. Very cool. As well. So, yeah, barkleymovie.com. Barkleymovie.com. Make sure to follow uh, more updates at. Barkley movie that's on Twitter and Instagram and then mm -hmm. on Facebook also the Barkley Marathons documentary film yep. so it's all over the place we're everywhere we're right? everywhere except <laughs> if you really want to go to the Barkley that's going to be a little bit harder that will be more difficult yeah we so this is not, the closest yeah. you can get yes it's probably the closest you will want to get right <laughs> yeah. after seeing it exactly yeah well uh I enjoyed this movie you will enjoy it too barkleymovie.com uh with us today Annika Iltis. I'm Ryan Malady. You can keep up with me at Ryan Malady and our show at The Popcorn Talk. And this has been another awesome episode inside the documentary discussing the Barkley Marathons. Thank you, Annika. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. So nice talking to you. you I appreciate to... it. Yeah, thank you for let's coming. Let's go for a run. You want to go for a jog? Yeah, I'm All ready. Right, let's let's go. Right, we'll see you out <laughs> let's there. Let's hydrate first. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Cheers. Oh. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.